So hello everyone, my name is Zinela Bidimouad. I am a member of the University of Angers and the Laboratory Laris. And today I'm going to defend my thesis entitled Contributions to Computer Vision Machine Learning for Plant Variety Testing. So this thesis was under the supervision of Professor David Rousseau, Dr. Enuine de Dagashi, and Dr. Peshman Rassi. Now, before um, addressing plant variety testing, let me first uh, introduce what is plant phenotyping. Plant phenotyping is the science of the characterization of the crops, and this characterization is achieved through the measurements of phenotypes also known as traits, such as the number of fruits, the fruit dimension, the tree dimension, and so on. And the comparison between the traits help us understand the interaction between the genotypes and the different environments. And this is the core of the, the, core of the plant breeding research field where the outcome are candidate varieties. We refer to them as candidates because they are not still yet authorized to be in the market. And to do so, they must pass through a process called variety testing. So variety testing are experiments that are conducted by examiners in examination offices to authorize the candidate variety to be in the market using relevant characteristics. There are two families of um, examinations. The first one is called DES. Uh, DES um, gives a description based on morphological characteristics, and it is managed by an international authority called UPOF for uh, Union for Protection of New Plants. And the UPOF sets out guidelines and uh, instructions in the form of a catalog to guide examiners to conduct their examination. And there are three types of uh, DES tests. The first one is called distinctness, where the candidate variety is uh, compared to the authorized varieties. And then we have uniformity, where the characteristics are compared in different environments. And then stability, where the characteristics are compared in a range of years. The second family is called VCU tests. And VCU tests is managed on a national level. In uh, France, uh, this is the task of uh, GVS. And the objective of VCU tests is to find the added value of the candidate variety in the market. So once the candidate variety passes the process of variety testing, it becomes registered. But before uh, being completely commercialized, uh, additional experiments are conducted by technical institutes on a larger scale so that they can advise farmers on the best varieties to um, uh, afford according to their local environment. So initially phenotyping was conducted manually, but with the democratization to access to several imaging sensors and the development of machine learning models, phenotyping has switched from manual practices to digital phenotyping. And in this scenario, images are acquired of the phenotypes at a, um, a processed using computer vision algorithms, and then we can extract information on the region of interest. So this numerical transition has been seen in plant breeding, for instance, with this uh, illustrative example, we have two varieties of tomato uh, under different uh, growth condition, and simply using a sensor of depth, we can track the, the, the growth. Also, in agriculture, we have autonomous robots and apps that can guide uh, farmers to get the best yield possible of their um, varieties. Now, while plant breeding and agriculture exploit computer vision, variety testing still relies on visual inspection. And this is questionable since the uh, practices in variety testing are slow and subjective. And this limitation of visual perception if um, uh, impacts on the scoring of the examiner, and this confusion also impacts on the reproducibility of the results, knowing that the variety testing are conducted on several sites of the union. So why there is low use of variety testing, uh, of computer vision in variety testing? To understand that, we need to understand the specificities of variety testing. And the first one are the instruction and the scoring system. The tests are managed by the youth of authority and the guidelines are set in a catalog and any changements in these instructions require a voting system by the stakeholders. 
and this is not an easy task to do. Plus, the budget is very low. The examination offices are state-owned, so they have really low budget to invest in uh, incorporating computer vision in, uh, um, in variety testing. So the objective of this PhD is to, is to propose methodologies to speed up the practices in variety testing, to increase the objectivity, low cost so that they can be affordable by examination offices, generalizable so that we can apply them on several crops and several um, threats, um, understandable by the examiners, and follows the UPOF instructions so that we remain in the context of variety testing. So, which crop to select? We had to make a choice and we selected apples. Why? Because we are in Angers, in the region with the second highest agro-industry activity of apples, plus because of the proximity with the examiners uh, uh, of apple varieties uh, and our collaboration with these examiners was um, under the European project invite, which allows us also to have data sets from seven sites of Europe. Now, which type of test to automate? Uh, well, uh, VCU tests are managed on a national authority, so the scale is specific to each country, and we, do want, we don't want to target such uh, tests because we want to contribute to something more general. So this is why we target this technical test, while for the uniformity, it is a comparison between the characteristic um, in uh, different environments. So we believe that the tools that we will develop for the distinctness will also serve for the uniformity. While for the stability, it is a comparison in a range of years, and we believe that this is out of the scope of the PhD. Now, the, the distinctness is a comparison between the candidate variety and the registered varieties. So this comparison can be addressed as a classification problem. If we project the registered varieties based on the information that were extracted in a reference frame, and we project the candidate variety on the same um, uh, threads, we can quantify the distance between the candidate variety and the registered varieties based on computer science algorithms, and this is more objectively. So, based on this concept, I will address the plan of this presentation by first addressing this issue in indoor, in variety testing orchards, then in outdoor, um, sorry, in outdoor, then in indoor. And then uh, in the third chapter, I will propose tool, to, tools to understand the decisions taken um, by machine learning. And fourth, uh, I will finish with a conclusion and perspective. So first, I will start with the, the first chapter. So let's assume that we are in an application where we want to automate the apple counting in variety testing orchards with computer vision technique. So the classical pipeline will start by acquiring uh, images of the rows, and then uh, using computer vision algorithms, we will, are going to detect the apples. Now, because counting do not require any instructions by the um, UPOF authority, we can apply state-of-art algorithms. And if we look at the literature, it first started with the handcrafted features, with, uh, which are some predefined uh, algorithms uh, like color threshold, where a threshold is uh, set to separate the, the, um, the pixels of apples to the pixels of the background. Uh, another uh, handcrafted feature, which is the circular uh, half transform, uh, which consists of a circle with a predefined radius. Now, the limitation of these handcrafted features is that they depend on the human choice, while deep learning depends on the data itself. So, uh, this is why deep learning was uh, introduced, and several architectures were tested uh, on the Apple detection using deep learning, such as UNET, where we have uh, features that are extra extracted in the encoder, then a decision is taken in the feature space, and then the image is resolved while uh, preserving the class information of the pixels. Another uh, architecture um, consists of splitting the image on several regions and then predict on each region uh, based on the classification score. Um, now, also in 3D point cloud, several several work have addressed the detection of uh, fruits and specifically apples, either using handcrafted or deep learning. For instance, we have this work that used MSAC to first estimate candidates uh, of uh, apples and then using shape, color, and depth information to um, um, discriminate the points that belong to the apple from the ones that belong to the background. 
Another work uh, used the, the LIDAR features such as reflectance, curvature, linearity to discriminate um, the points that belong to the leaf area uh, and the background from the ones that, that belong to the apples. So using the state of art algorithms, we can indeed detect and automate the counting of apples. But do we really want to do that? Well, actually, it is not the case because we are in variety testing orchard. We are not in a production orchard. Each tree belongs to a variety. So using the state of art in our case, it's not, um, do not fit with the problematic. One can also say we can apply the state of art on the level of individual trees. Well, actually we could if we had such a scenario with apples well separated while apple trees well separated while it is not the case in variety testing. We have intersecting branches. So we need first to separate the apple trees. So separating apple trees in, in 2D images, it's uh, ambiguous. This is why we target the problem in the 3D. While in the 3D, uh, especially in the harvest period, we cannot identify the branches among the leaf area. This is why we choose to perform the uh, separation of trees on the level of apple trees in the winter. So we acquire a 3D model uh, of the apple trees in the winter, then we separate the apple trees uh, between each other, then we, prefer, we perform an alignment between the point cloud in the winter and in the uh, harvest period so that we can map the apple detected in the harvest period on the apple trees separated. So the, the novelty of this work is the whole pipeline. And uh, this work was published in uh, Biosystem uh, Engineering. So let me recall the steps. The first is data acquisition. The second is separating apple trees. The third is apple detection uh, on the um, registered uh, point cloud and then assigning apples uh, detected to the correct apple tree. Uh, we want to acquire a physical scene uh, using RGB sensor. So we acquire I guess it's CO2. <laughs> so we want to acquire a physical scene with an RGB sensor. And uh, before we put um, a reference object, I will talk about it later. So we acquire several images uh, from a several sites covering top from the bottom, from left and the right. And we use these images to reconstruct the 3D model. How? By first, fi first finding the key point matching and then performing triangulation. And we keep doing this on the level of all the pixels until restoring the 3D point cloud. So uh, these, uh, this is a recap about the images that were acquired for each uh, scene. A scene is a 3D point cloud containing either five or four, four trees. And uh, the, uh, the trees belong to the experimental unit of Inraye Angers. Uh, and this is a visual of the point cloud in the harvest period that demonstrate the quality of the reconstruction. So we have a calibrated 3D point cloud in harvest period. This is the output of the 3D reconstruction in the harvest and in the winter. So now we need to make it and now we need to calibrate the point cloud. And for that, we are going to use the reference object that we place, placed earlier. We want to exploit the known distance between the center of patches to convert the scale from unknown scale to metric scale in the millimeters in real world unit. And using this metric scale, we can define threshold so that we can uh, separate uh, the, the foreground from the background and align uh, the point cloud uh, on a reference frame. So we apply this calibration on both uh, point clouds in harvest period and in winter, and we can see that this calibration already almost aligned the point clouds between each other. Now, to quantify the calibration objectively, we will measure the distance between uh, the trees in the in the 3D models in harvest period and in winter and in the physical scene. We can see first we, uh, the measurements between the trees in the winter point cloud and in the physical world. We have a high correlation. The same observation between the measurements in the harvest point cloud and uh, in the real world. And also we performed a, a correlation between the measurements in the winter and in the harvest period. So we observe we have almost 100 of correlation which demonstrate the quality of the calibration. So 
Now uh, we succeed as uh, performing the calibration. Uh, we will proceed to the separation of the apple trees in the winter point cloud. So first we perform a skeletonization, then a half transform to detect the trellis wires, and then on the by projecting the trellis wires, we look for the regions with the uh, with the dense um, uh, with the dense points. These correspond to the trunk. So we assign a label to a point, either a trunk, a trellis wire, or a branch. So now we need to separate the 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 branch, the connected branches. For that, we first um, conduct a connected component analysis, and we measure the distance between the connected components and the trunk. Like that, we can assign a connected component, which is a branch, to the trunk. Now, uh, it is true that sometimes connected components are assigned to two trees in the same time, and this corresponds to the case where we have uh, intersection. And for that, what we do is we look at the z-axis for the points that changes the direction on the z-axis. This corresponds to the meeting point between the branches. And we discard this point like that. We break the connectivity and we can then assign a label to each individual tree. So first, um, we quantify uh, this uh, semantic segmentation using the metrics recall and precision on the trellis wires level. So we compare the detected points with the manual, uh, the, the ground route that we used, that we created using Cloud Compare. And we can see uh, we have a mean recall uh, that reaches 84% and the precision, mean precision that, that, uh, have a, that uh, reach 80%. We also uh, assessed uh, the seg segmentation on the track level uh, by comparing to the manual uh, to the to the ground truth, and we uh, observe uh, a high uh, recall average of 91%, which demonstrates that we retrieve all the tracks. And the precision, it is true, it is low, but to understand that, we must understand that the point clouds are noisy, and some points belong to the trees and were assigned to the tracks. Now, once again, it is true that um, what we used as methods may be improved, but for the sake of what we want to demonstrate, which is separating apple trees and assigning the counts to the individual apple trees, these results are satisfactory. So we proceed to the apple detection. Uh, we convert the RGB color representation to HSV color representation, and then we perform a connected component analysis, and we map the detected apples on the point cloud in the harvest period. We uh, evaluate the, um, our pipe, our method to detect the apples using the recall and the precision, and we obtain 83% uh, of uh, average recall and 60 of uh, precision. So 83 means that we almost retrieve all the apples, which, uh, which is good because uh, our objective is not to detect all the apples. Our objective to, is to assign the detected apples to the, um, to the correct uh, apple tree. And for the precision, uh, it is indeed low because of the color-based uh, method. But once again, the objective is not to uh, uh, propose a robust method. The objective is to assign the count to the individual apple trees. So let me recall the pipeline. We calibrated the 3D models in the harvest period and in the winter period. And then we separated the individual apple trees in the winter. We performed the registration using first the calibration which allows us to have initial alignment then the icp algorithm that make the alignment more perfect and then we can assign the apples detected to the um, correct apple tree and for that we simply perform a distance between uh, the detected apples and the closest branch so that we assign the label of the closest branch to the apples to the apple detected so uh, we um, evaluate the, apple, the assignment of apples using this metric, and uh, a detection is a true positive correctly uh, assigned if its identity predicted is equal to the identity of the matched apple in the ground truth. To understand that, I illustrate with this example. Let's uh, assume that these two uh, have a ground truth identity of five, and this one, which is the red one, so it was detected as fine as five. So we have the same identity. This is true positive correctly assigned. While for the one in the back, 
it was uh, detected as 36, while in the ground truth, it is assigned as, as um, 5. So this is a true positive, but not correctly assigned. Now, to separate the deformation between uh, sorry, the errors between the deformation between the apple, uh, the point clouds in the harvest period and the, in the, the winter and the errors due to our pipeline, we conducted also um, uh, assignment, but this time not, not on a, a point cloud where the apple trees were separated automatically within our pipeline, but manually. So we can see that uh, uh, for the result that we almost have 97% on all the scene, which demonstrates the potential of our pipeline at separating the apple trees and assigning correctly the apples detected to the um, individual trees. So as a conclusion, we presented a pipeline that reached 97% at uh, assigning apples detected to the correct apple trees. We used a color checker as a reference pattern, but any uh, other object with the pattern can be used to calibrate the, the RGB point cloud. Uh, indeed, uh, some sub-steps, uh, especially in the tree separation uh, during the winter uh, point cloud, uh, are open for further improvement, but once again, it was not our objective. Our objective was to prove that our pipeline can assign correctly the apples detected to the apple trees. So we demonstrated this pipeline on the detection uh, on the counting of apples, but it can be extended to other traits. So we move to the second chapter, and in this chapter we assign we address the distinctness test in controlled environments. So we said that the candidate varieties and the registered varieties can be compared in a reference frame uh, using computer science algorithms. Well, in this first part of this chapter, we are going to quantify the potential of one algorithm called opti optimal transport at quantifying the distance between the candidate and the reference or the registered varieties. And we will demonstrate this potential on the case of distinctness test based on the Apple color characterization. So this work was uh, published in the ICCV conference. So let me first uh, explain how the optimal transport is uh, is computed. Uh, first, we have two uh, the, two distributions. This is called the Monge problem, uh, French scientist, and we want to transport uh, the point uh, x y to the distribution uh, nu. So the objective is to find the cheapest way, and the cheapest way means that our co our cost function we want uh, we want uh, to have the minimum of this cost function and in this case the cost function will be the distance between the point and its projection its projection in the new uh, distribution so it is an integral on the on both um, axes x y and the optimal transport is formulated as the minimum of this um, formulation. So in this work, we use it, uh, the earth uh, distance, uh, earth movers distance as a cost function, but there are plenty and variant of cost functions in the optimal transport. So let's uh, see how we acquire data. Uh, so we have this box of apples and uh, we acquire them individually using a conveyor machine that we developed. So uh, it's a conveyor connected to a camera that uh, acquire images from the top and then uh, the images are, uh, uh, are transferred to a raspberry that uh, uh, segment the apples from the background. So we acquired two data sets. The first one, Mongala, which corresponds to apples uh, highly contrasted in colors. And the second uh, data set, it's Gala, Mutant Gala, which corresponds to the uh, apples in the limit of the contrast. And from each image, from each data set, we uh, extract the histograms, which corresponds to a mapping of the pixel uh, using the RGB uh, channel. So we proceed to the feature ex extraction, but before uh, we compute, uh, because uh, now we had just histogram per image, now we compute the histogram on the level of the variety by computing a mean um, of the histograms um, uh, acquired. So once the candidate, uh, the histograms uh, per variety are um, co computed, we uh, proceed, uh, proceed to the first feature, which is optimal transport. And in optimal transport, as explained before, we compare the histogram on the level of the image to the 
all the histograms in the level of varieties. And then as an output, we have a vector where each uh, scalar uh, quantified the distance between the histogram of the image and the histogram of the variety. So we add to the optimal transport classical features, including color features, um, uh, mean and variance, uh, fractional anisotropy, fractal box counting uh, dimension, and uh, mutual entropy. So, regarding the classification pipeline, uh, we first uh, split the data set into three uh, into two subsets: training data set and testing data set. Then we compute on each data set the, um, the feature uh, optimal transport, and then we train a classifier to predict the variety. Now we apply this pipeline first on the on the feature space using only optimal transport, then using optimal transport plus all the features. So uh, let's uh, look at the results uh, for uh, the non-gala mutant, which corresponds to the um, to the apples where the contrast is high, uh, and the classification with all the features. We can see that we reach 97 percent and the uh, forward analysis uh, proved that optimal transport was the feature that participate the most at this classification accuracy and we can see the same behavior applied on the gala mutants while this time with low values which is logical because the gala mutants represent the colors with the lim in the limit of the in the, the apples in the limit of the contrast so as you can see, we demonstrated that optimal transport indeed can be used to quantify the distance between varieties, and we demonstrated into in the in the test of apples. But of course, it it can be extended to any other threads. So we automated the distinctness test based on color characterization, but this requires an annotation of the data because the gala mutants of gala and non-gala were annotated by experts. And one question is, could we ask, could we avoid to ask the examiners to annotate the data? Well, actually, some tests uh, in the UPOF catalog uh, consist of comparing the observation to some drawings. And one idea could be, can we use these drawings and, as numerical ground truth uh, to avoid annotation? So this work was um, uh, published uh, or submitted in Biosystem Engineering and, and the, re the review. So our objective is to switch from a classical evaluation to an automatic evaluation where the apples um, uh, are compared to the to the three uh, drawings from the UPOV catalog, flat, globose, and oval. So this comparison is done through shape features. We first extract the shape features from the drawings, then we extract the shape features from the RGB image, and we compute a similarity measure using uh, Euclidean distance so that we can assign the RGB to the uh, nearest class. So to assess the robustness, we are going to compare our classification with the data annotated by examiners. So first we acquire images uh, using this scanner, uh, and then we ask examiners to annotate individually uh, apples on the three classes, flat, globose, and oval. And on both uh, distributions, we create a third data set, which we call a curate data set, that contains only images that were mutually annotated on the same class. So uh, regarding the classification setup, we uh, we have feature space composed of the chain code histogram of Fourier descriptors and of aspect ratio of cat apples, which consists of um, which represents an invariant uh, features to translation scale and uh, rotation. This is our pipeline to uh, classify the RGB images based on the drawings, and one question could be. Are these drawings really represent the shape of apples? I mean, they can. They, it may have some confusion that they are not represent the right shape. So, to answer this uh, hypothesis, we are going to test this pipeline on three uh, variants of drawings. First, on the reference drawings extracted from the UPOV catalog. Then, on the classes representatives, which consists of extracting the mean of uh, uh, of um, RGB images uh, by uh, first uh, computing the aspect ratio of all images, and then using the k-means assigning the mean to each class, flat, globose, and oval. 
And the third um, variant of drawings is the rescaled reference drawings. And this consists of using the centered, um, uh, the classes representative, using their aspect ratio to rescale the reference drawings so that we obtain the, ref the rescaled reference drawings. So now we can apply our pipeline using the three variants of drawings. Uh, for the sake of comparison between uh, the model-based classification, we also computed the classification using SVM and then uh, using a deep learning approach on the supervised uh, manner and on the self-supervised manner. So these are the steps of the classification. We first split the train uh, the data set into train and test uh, and decrease the size of training to observe the plateau of performance. Then we train the data on the SVM. We use the SVM to predict the shape uh, of apples. And on the same test data, we apply the instance-based classification to guarantee a fair comparison between the results of the instance-based classification and the model-based classification. And to quantify the sensitivity of the chosen data in the training and the test, we repeat this process several times on different uh, training and test sets. So uh, let's look at the results of the first uh, multi-class classification. Um, this is the result of the model-based uh, prediction. We can observe that the plot of performance decreases, which is logical because uh, we have less training data. And we, we, when we compare it to the instance-based classification using reference drawings, we can, of course, see that uh, the, the, the performance or the accuracy drops. But one interesting behavior is the stability of, uh, of um, the curve, which demonstrates somehow the independency of this approach to the test set. So uh, the, the third result is uh, the instance-based classification, but this time using the classes representatives. And we can see that the accuracy improves, which somehow approves our hypothesis that the shapes in the drawings do not really represent the apple's shape. And we can see this even uh, in the reference, uh, the rescale the reference drawings using, uh, so these are the type of drawings that uh, we, uh, that um, were initially just uh, extracted from the UPOV, but uh, uh, rescaled. And we can see that the accuracy also improved. So this is interesting result because it demonstrates that the shapes do not correspond to the reshape of apples. And also it demonstrates that our approach is valid and can be applied. Now, also we have the interesting um, behavior that it is stable uh, while uh, the model-based classification depends on the test and the training data. And we compare to the deep learning on both manners and we can observe uh, a, a curve that drops, which is logical because we are uh, in the order of magnitude of 60, 600 uh, images, while deep learning requires a high amount of data. So we, are, we perform the same classification, but this time using only flat and, uh, flat and oval. We discarded the intermediate class globals. And we observe high accuracy for either model-based or instance-based on the three variants of the drawings. And this is an interesting result because it is uh, it's somehow in accordance to what we may think because globals in, in, is in intermediate class. So it shares it shares the elongation of the class oval and the flatness of the flat uh, class. So when we discard it, we somehow break the connectivity between the three classes, which demonstrates why we have a high uh, accuracy of classification. While for the deep learning, we still observe um, uh, the same behavior, so the curve that drops because we don't have enough data. So as a conclusion, we have demonstrated the potential of optimal transport at quantifying the distance between the candidates and the registered varieties. We demonstrated on the apples, but it can be extended uh, on the color, but it can be extended to other traits. Uh, we also demonstrated that the drawings can indeed be used as numerical ground truth and can help us to avoid asking for annotation. And uh, this type of test can be extended to, we demonstrated on the apple shape, but it can be extended to other uh, UPOV uh, catalog um, tests. We move to the third chapter. So we demonstrated that the distinctness can be considered as a classification problem, but for the safe, for the sake of clarity, 
the examiner should understand the results of the machine learning. They should be able to associate a good and a well-structured Latin space uh, with a good classification accuracy and a bad structured Latin space with a bad uh, accuracy. So for that, in this chapter, we propose tools to understand and quantify the Latin space in the case of ordinal data. Why ordinal data? Because some traits in variety testing are scored following the ordinal scale. And also ordinal, ordinality is interpretable in one dimension. We can see the order from one um, from one class to the next one. And we expect somehow this ordinality to be on the level of the feature space. So this ordinality can be seen as a criteria to quantify uh, the, um, the quality of a Latin space. So now I demonstrated on the 2D uh, just for illustration, but what about n-dimensional ordinal space? So usually we use dimension reduction techniques to project the n-dimensional feature space to 2D or 3D, either using a, a well-known dimension reduction techniques such as PCA, TESNI, LDA, KDA, and ISOMAP. Now, this, the problem of these dimension reduction techniques is that they don't incorporate the ordinal structure of the classes in their formulation. For instance, PCA tends to maximize the variance. So our contribution in this work is to propose a dimension reduction technique which is suitable to ordinal data, which is called best view projection for BVP. So the formulation of the problem is we have, uh, for instance, as illustration, we have 3D point cloud, and our objective is to find the viewpoint in this 3D point cloud so that the class, the centers of the adjacent classes are as distant as uh, possible from each other. And um, if I can illustrate it in more details, if we assume these are adjacent classes, objective is to find a viewpoint where the projection of the uh, classes is maximal. So this corresponds to maximize the Euclidean distance, the sum of Euclidean distance between the centers of uh, uh, adjacent classes uh, while uh, looking for the viewpoints with the norm equals to one. And maximizing this, this, this distance is equivalent to minimizing this distance. So for that, we just use a uh, gradient descent to look for the, uh, the, um, the viewpoint that minimize this function. So we first assess visually uh, the results uh, on uh, a synthetic uh, ordinal data. Um, we can see that uh, BVP uh, projected correctly the ordinality, LDA the same, but PCA uh, produced a noisy structure. And we can understand that because the direction of ordinality is different from the direction of the variance. Another um, uh, experiment on uh, other type of uh, synthetic ordinal data set uh, shows that LDA, um, the structure of all the LDA is noisy. And we can understand that because LDA tends to project the uh, Latin variables uh, according to the center of the classes, while BVP it projects according to the center of adjacent classes. So. Um, sometimes we cannot visually quantify the, quanti the quality of a feature space. And for that, we propose ordinal metrics. And we first uh, introduce the first metric deviation from ordinality, which is uh, trivial. It just uh, compared the position of centers in the path connecting the orders in the, in the right order with the, with the path connecting the centers in the shortest path. Uh, order. So let me illustrate uh, in this example how we compute it. For instance, we have a path with the with the um, the correct order. So we have a sequence of two, three, and here we have a path that passes through to the nearest centers. So we have a sequence of three, two. So we can compare by just uh, performing a subtraction of the order in the reference and in the shortest path. So one means that the center moved from original position to the extreme position. And zero means that the, the center remains stable. So we, comp we don't compute the, the, the metric on the level of the first center because uh, we consider it as the reference to compare both paths. So uh, if we go back to our example and uh, apply the deviation from ordinality, we see that all the values has uh, zero, uh, have zero. And this is not in accordance with what we observe because PCA is somehow noisy and do not work 
correspond to BVP or LDA in terms of the quality of ordinality. This is why we need to introduce another metric so that we can quantify the severity of intersection. So we propose the interclass intersection metric and it has two outputs. First, we compute a boundary around uh, the instances and then we quantify the severity of uh, intersection between the classes. And the second output is just a binary scalar to state if the intersection is between the adjacent class or between the non-adjacent classes. So when we go to when we go back now to our example where deviation from ordinality could not capture the difference between the feature space, we can now use the uh, inter, inter class intersection and we can see that PCA has 65% of intersection while BVP has only 3%. And this is in accordance with what we observe in terms of the quality of ordinality. So uh, as a limitation uh, of uh, what we propose, uh, BVP, so it fails when we have feature space that are eccentric. And one perspective is to convert the reference frame of the feature space from Cartesian to polar coordinates. One um, other limitation is the way we um, we compute the intersection between the classes. We, for, for the moment currently, we draw ellipsoid. And in some cases, ellipsoid tend to uh, intersect with the, the instances of the other classes. While if we had some alternative methods such as polygons, it might be more accurate uh, to cover only the instances of, um, of uh, the, the classes and then maybe produce more objective results. So uh, to finish my uh, talk, um, first as a conclusion on the level of the first chapter, we developed a pipeline that separates individual apple trees and assign correctly the count to the individual apple trees. So as I as stated before, the novelty is in the pipeline and how it uh, proceeds to assign the, 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 the apple counting to the individual apple trees. So as a limitation, well, we use 3D approach and actually not all traits requires 3D. And the, also the energy that we produce, um, especially in a context where uh, we are uh, somehow uh, in ecological problems, we produce a lot of um, uh, energy for maybe uh, an output that is not required. So as a perspective, we propose an acquisition method to speed up the annotation. So. Actually, this was a perspective, but uh, we uh, we um, we, uh, we 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 give a proof of feasibility of this perspective, and we even uh, published the uh, the work in the IPP's conference. And uh, this uh, acquisition methodology consists of acquiring uh, or recording a video while focusing on the trait that we want to assess. And then moving uh, um, quickly uh, on the on the region where there is nothing uh, the important that appears. So the difference between uh, two sequences here is the motion. We use we slow down where there is where there is something interest, and we move uh, quickly when there is nothing interest. So we extract the frames, and then we estimate the motion between the frames, and then we um, uh, extract the histogram of motion on the level of each image. So this is just to show you that this is an histogram uh, on the level of a frame that belongs to the sequence where we focus on the phenotype. And this is an histogram of a frame that belongs to the sequence where we are moving. So we can see that the pixels takes all the values, while here, everything is um, somehow um, converged uh, to zero, because zero, it means uh, no motion. So now we just use features to discriminate do those two types of uh, histograms, and uh, the, so that we can sort the, what we call K-frames, which corresponds to frames uh, where we focus on the trait from the no K-frames. And the results were very good. We actually achieved 96% of uh, accuracy and uh, we almost retrieved all the K-frames. So regarding the second chapter, we proved that optimal transport is suitable to variety testing. We demonstrated on apples based on the color, but it can be extended to any other traits. We also demonstrated that the sketches in the UPOF catalog can be used as numerical ground truth. And now that the system is working uh, properly in uh, indoor, 
can we test it in outdoor? Well, actually, we can uh, use what we call the transfer of knowledge from indoor to outdoor, and we uh, tested the impact of the transfer in the case of uh, racetine detection. So we had a data set that was acquired using the same acquisition that I showed you before, and we acquired images um, uh, of apple trees that contains rusting and uh, the ones that do not contain apple rusting. And then we performed just a classification using uh, SVM. And we can see here, and this is the interesting result, is uh, the, the, the blue curve outperform the green curve when we start to add indoor data to outdoor data. And this demonstrates that we can reduce the efforts to annotate in the outdoor by using the, the indoor data. So uh, this uh, work also was uh, published in the con uh, conference ESC. And uh, on the level of the chapter three, we propose the BVP that is uh, suitable for the visualization and projection of ordinal data. We introduced metrics to quantify objectively feature space. We also incorporate the metrics and the dimension reduction techniques in a software called Ordinalysis that is now uh, open access. Um, and uh, we tested the Ordinalysis in variety testing uh, tests. Uh, this, this is the case of pathogen uh, evaluation. And also as a perspective, uh, we shared the Ordinalysis with the other, other um, uh, companies such as the company Coquelico that described the thermal comfort, uh, comfort in a uh, ordinal scale. And uh, to finish my presentation, so this is a recap of all the data sets uh, the annotated data, the applications that were developed, and the associated uh, publications to each data set. So um, we actually uh, succeed at developing the methodologies to uh, speed up the accuracy, uh, to speed up the detectness test and improve their accuracy uh, by uh, comparing uh, to the ground truth. The, our methodologies are low cost because we use just simple sensors that are affordable and even the sorting machine is very low cost compared to commercialized ones. Generalizable because, uh, uh, for instance, for the case of optimal transport, we demonstrated in the case of app, apples based on the color, but it can be extended to any other shapes, uh, sorry, uh, threads. The sorting machine also can be applied on other crops, not only apples. Drawings also can be, uh, the methodology based on drawings can be extended to other um, tests. Interpretable because first we always try to mimic the procedures that are done in the in the in the practices of variety testing and also we propose now tools to understand the feature space where machine learning takes the decision and we followed the UPOF of instructions because all the methodologies were based and compared to annotated data by the examiners that respect the instructions of the UPOF. So uh, this is it. I want to thank uh, all the jury members and all the collaborators for providing the data. I want to thank you for your attention and uh, I'm happy to answer your questions.